In my work, I make a series of boxes, one of which is a finial box. This is a certainly a more challenging project than what we've shown you to date. This has an infit lid, and when you remove it, there is a suction pop. What I'm going to do now, after reassembling it, is to go to the chart and take you through the stages of the development of this box. This chart that I have here will show you the first three stages of the development of the finial box. The first thing we do is to mount a piece of wood between centres and turn to a cylinder. Cut in a spigot on this end with a slight undercut which will go into the scroll chuck. The next stage is that we measure this and divide this up into the fact that the lid will represent a third of the overall size of the piece and the base two thirds. At this stage this lid is a little longer than a third because there's an element that fits inside this piece. We part in with a parting tool a short way to define that length. We then move on here and reduce the diameter of the top, which is going to be the form the finial part of the box, and we reduce this area here to the size of the plug fit. We'll now go to the lathe and take the cylinder to those stages. We're now going to make the finial box. We've got our stock up between centers, ready to turn. Rough this down with a three quarter inch roughing gouge, supplied with the bevel rubbing. It's 45 degrees out of the vertical, that flute. You notice the fingers um, pushing along the tool rest there, almost working like a travis. Always cutting downhill so as you don't get massive material in front of the gouge. You can get a fairly clean cut just from the roughing guard with control. Just going to part down across the end to form the spigot to fit into the scroll chuck. And using the 3.8 beading parting tool, just checking that diameter with the calipers. It needs to reduce more. Now it's there and just cutting down the slight taper that will go within the scroll chuck. The spigot is about an inch and a half in diameter and about three sixteenths of an inch long. Just checking to see that the spigot was clean. It's now ready to be removed from the lathe. You can see that slight undercut there to fit within the scroll chuck. The chuck has been put on the lathe with the spindle locked. We enter the dock into the jaws of the chuck and tighten the scroll jaws down onto the spigot. We're now ready to proceed truing the end up. You could see that we had the drive centre marks there. These all need to be cleaned off. For the purpose of the videos we've been cutting the spigot on the tailstock end. Normally when I'm working at home I cut on the headstock end and this procedure is not necessary. I've just shown you cutting with the, the fingernail gouge. Now I'm showing you that you can clean that end with the skew chisel. You can see that little waste block fly off the end there. Just looks like a little coolie hat. And that tool will give you the cleanest cut that is possible to achieve on end grain. It's also the most difficult tool to use. Just have to remember that it's only the edge that's cutting. Don't let it lean over else it kicks back. I'm just going to show you cleaning this surface up with the heel of the skew chisel. You can see we're cutting just beyond the point and not beyond the center line. It's in that lower section of the tool. You can see those lovely little shavings coming off which will give us an extremely clean surface. This tool works extremely well on this sort of timber. Now we've got a surface true. We're going to measure the proportions here for the length of the lid. Remember that this is going to be a third of the overall length of the piece when it's completed. Now going to part in here with the eighth parting tool about five-eighths of an inch. 
see I'm cutting to the headstock end of that pencil line. This has defined the length of the lid. Now we need to reduce that down. I'm using the 3 8 spindle gouge with a conventional angle. The long lady finger point cutting downhill all the time as you can see. Rubbing that bevel behind the cut. The flute of the tool is usually applied at 45 degrees out of the vertical. You just turn it over to cut back that way. Now I'm just taking the 3 8 beading tool to true up that area, using it like a skew chisel. That needs to be parallel, not like a cork fit. This is the bit that's critical and it fits inside that base. I'm going to the chart now to explain to you the next three stages of the development of this finial box. The first thing that we do is to form 90% of the finial form with a small spindle gouge. Then we go back to the shoulder here and make that absolutely parallel. This is critical. This is the piece that defines the fit of the lid. After this is achieved, this is parted off with an eighth parting tool. We then go to the base and we hollow the interior with a small gouge, just a, an area there. And then we create a shoulder here, normally with a parting tool. This is again the critical fit area. When you can see on this detail here, this shoulder has to be absolutely parallel to fit this in-fitting plug. This should be a tight friction fit. Once this is assembled, we then start and do the outside profile. The shape that we have here is going to be two-thirds of the final visual image. We leave the base slightly heavier at this stage to carry the weight while we hollow the interior. Now we can start and shape the finial form using that 3-8 spindle gouge, reducing that down further. Now we're getting somewhere closer to the profile we're looking for. You're always cutting downhill with this tool. We're now getting down closer to designing this box. As you can see, it's starting to take shape. To give you some touchstones, the infit part of this lid is normally about two-fifths of the overall diameter of the piece. In this case, this piece is about two and a half inches in diameter, so the plug is about an inch and an eighth in diameter. The length of that plug is usually around quarter to five sixteenths in length. The size of the finial that we're creating here, that diameter will, on the largest part of it will normally be around 5 eighths to 3 quarters as the absolute maximum on something of this size. I've been shaping it through with the little fingernail gouge. Now I've picked up the 3 8 beading tool which I use very much like a skew chisel as you can see. I roll that round to get a nice curve on the top of that finial and we go through the end here, creating a slight point. This is the plug that fits inside. This has to be absolutely parallel. This is critical. And using that 3-8 beading tool like a skew chisel to give us an extremely fine finish. Normally, I don't like to sand this area because it's so easy to round it and you need this to be absolutely parallel. This is 400 grit paper and I'm being very careful not to round that top off or the underside. Just refine that finish a little more and with a little bit of wax on a cloth we just polish that up because you're not going to get an opportunity to finish that again. 
we're ready to par through here. Taking the eighth parting tool, making a peeling cut as you go through. I stop when there's about a 3.8 tenon there and remove that piece with the saw. This prevents the tear out and is much safer. We need to finish the underside of that lid. We're now going to insert this finial into a hollow mandrel. And you can see that we've got a surface that needs cleaning. I'm going to make this slightly concave using the fingernail gouge. There's our mandrel, half prepared. It's got a hole right through it so as we can eject that knob without damaging it. I've already cut a tenon on the end there, or a spigot, with the slight undercut to fit into the scroll chuck. I need to take the dimensions of the outside diameter there, using the vernier calipers. And then, you can see I've got to increase that size to fit that finial within. This is what will happen once that's opened up. It'll sit down in the mandrel and then I can tool that bottom off. It'll be friction held in there. I've prepared this little ejection stick here. It's turned with a depression in it, just like a countersink. And then you can eject that finial without damaging that point. Now we're going to insert the mandrel in the chuck. The spindle is locked, we tighten down onto that spigot. Now I'm going to mark the diameter that I need with the vernier calipers. Just checking on the right hand side. Now to make that all clear, we put the pencil mark in. I shall start and open that up with the 3.8 beading parting tool. This is a tool I use a great deal, as you can see. This could be done with a point of a skew chisel just as easily if it was used flat on the rest. Just check that to see if it fits. It's not quite big enough at the moment. Take another cut, just to open it up a little. Still not quite there. Ease it a little bit more. Now it's too loose. We can correct this. Just going to make it a little deeper now. We're too loose. Well, we can manage to correct this. We've got a little serviette here. We're pushing that through, and that's given us a good grip. If it was any more than this, you would have to cut that recess again and make it a tight fit, but we should be able to turn that. With a little fingernail gouge, I'm going to cut across the bottom there, making that slightly concave. So it's a nice true base to this piece. The bevel all the time is rubbing behind that cut. I'm just going to use the skew again to remove the ripples in a shearing scraper cut.
sanding underneath here using whack on the paper now we've gone to the 4-0 steel wall again dipped in wax I've just waxed underneath here as it gets very little handling and that should be sufficient. We take our mandrel out and now we're ready to eject that little finial knob tooled up underneath. Just tap it and out it comes. And there we have the underneath tooled to completion. We're now ready to put our base of the box into the scroll jaws, releasing the set pin there to release the spindle. We're now ready to start and fit the plug inside here. Just striking that with a pencil line as I'd got a mark from where the parting tool was that I could see, which is very close to the diameter I need. Just removing that little core. Now, with the 3 8 spindle gouge with the short angle, I'm using that to bore a hole. Again, the flute is 10 to 15 degrees out of the vertical when you start to bore in. You start to holler with the flute at 45 degrees out of the vertical. You can see this pivoting cut. Now I've got to form the shoulder. I'm using the 3-8 beading parting tool. Opening it up closer and closer to that pencil line. Just checking to see if it'll fit. Still a little small at the moment. Opening up again. Some people may prefer to use the point of the skew to do this, but this is the method that I always use. Almost there, but not quite just needs to be opened a little more and eventually we'll make it a little deeper. I've only gone in about an eighth of an inch at this time. That's the fit we're looking for. Now I've fitted the plug in there. I'm still not quite as happy as I'd like to be with that shape so I'm just going to refine it a little more. Using the fingernail gouge as you can see Normally I try to have this done while it's still attached to the piece, but I made this slightly wrong and wasn't quite as happy with the form as I would have liked. Just easing little whispers off it, just truing it up here with that beading parting tool. You can see it roll in there, the bevel coming down there. It's being used just like a skew chisel. You can get extremely fine detail. You can see that little point now beginning to really look really clean. These little shavings make all the difference to the overall profile of the piece. This is the critical factor. A little bit removed makes all the difference to it from the visual side. Notice that the shoulder is sticking out slightly of the base of the piece. This is intentional as I want to blend that in to that shape. You can see that protrusion. Now that, I'm happy with the form that I've got there now. I measured the length of the box. I'm parting in there with the narrow parting tool to define the overall length of the piece. Now with the spindle gouge, I'm starting to shape the outside form, blending that in. 
Now I've gone to the bottom to reduce the mass from there somewhat. Continuing to dub the devil behind the cut. This is the 3 8 spindle guides that I'm using. So I'm just going to blend those curves in together as you can see. Very critical that you don't make this shoulder a diagonal shape, else you'll find that you get a feather edge on the material there. This needs to be nicely rounded where that plug fit goes in. Now I'm using the 3-8 beading tool to round this more, using it like a skew chisel. A delicate cut, one you can very easily make a mistake in it. Something you can only do when you've really got your skill level at a high standard. Most people will probably find this easier to do with the gouge rather than that tool. Now using the point of the skew chisel to true that body up. Again, a tool that needs considerable skill to handle, which comes from practice. The bevel's always rubbing just behind the cutting edge to give the support. See, I'm cutting in the lower section of the tool. Don't come beyond the center line, so you can be in trouble. Tool can grab. I'm now going to explain the last three stages in the development of this box. First thing we do is to remove the lid and then we excavate the interior. This is hollowed normally with a 3 8 spindle gouge. It's then refined with a side cutting round nose scraper which comes round here and pulls through. I have a, one that is modified somewhat which allows me to get back under this shoulder. Once that is achieved, we replace the lid here and we need now to quicken the base area to, to create the full form of this piece. You can see on the last drawing that this has been achieved. We've quickened this base down considerably against this one here and all that remains now is to sand the exterior to total conclusion, the interior to conclusion, apply whatever polish or finish that you have in mind and once that has been achieved, you then go to the end and part this off with a small parting tool. The final thing that needs to be done then is to tool the bottom of the base. We use our little 3-8 spindle gouge, bore in a hole in there, and then we start and swing round, as you can see. These boxes are more difficult because they're enclosed more, so you have to be more precise with your cutting. It's easy to rub the bevel on the top shoulder and round it off, so be very careful when you're making these cuts. Now we're ready to move in with the side cutting round nose scraper. Go down to the bottom of the box, then pivot slightly outward, taking that round. I need now to get underneath that shoulder, and you can see I've got this modified little swan neck scraper here that allows me to get back under there. We remove the knob. We're going to check the depth here. I want to leave about 3 sixteenths of an inch of material in the bottom there. Just checking that with the depth gauge. And now we're ready to start and hollow. And again, we use our little 3 8 spindle gouge, bore in a hole in there, and then we start and swing round, as you can see. These boxes are more difficult because they're enclosed more, so you have to be more precise with your cutting. It's easy to rub the bevel on the top shoulder and round it off, so be very careful when you're making these cuts. Again, it's that 45 degrees out of the vertical doing the hollowing. Pulling up, as you can see, and pivoting at the same time. Removing quite a lot of the mass at this time just rubbing that tool back and forth under that shoulder but it's in a scraping mode underneath there
checking the depth once more a little bit more refinement and material to be removed we're getting very close now to the final cuts with the gouge I aim to get 90 to 95 percent of the material out with the gouge before resorting to the scrapers to refine those ripples and undulation. Now we're ready to move in with the side cutting round nose scraper. Just lifting the rest up a bit so as it tilts down out of the horizontal about 10 or 15 degrees and cuts on centre height. You see I'm removing the ripples that I've left there with the gouge. Go down to the bottom of the box and pivot slightly outward taking that round. You get quite a bit of leverage when you're down that bottom end there. You can see the tool just bouncing a little, but it's pretty clean now. Just another cut, little pimple in the middle. I like to grind that slightly flat across the end so that it can go just over the other side of the centre. When you're using these scrapers, you've got to be very careful that you don't damage the shoulder of the opening. I'm going very close to that top surface at that time. I need now to get underneath that shoulder, and you can see I've got this modified little swan neck scraper here that allows me to get back under there without fouling on the shoulder and the opening. This tool has been modified from one of the round nose side cutting scrapers. I modified them after they're worn out and passed their usefulness from their normal tool condition. just going to go back and blend the two surfaces together here. There's a slightly larger curve than if I was using under the shoulder, so it makes it easier to blend that together. Just a final check on the depth there. One more pass here. Hopefully we'll be happy with the result.
Just checking the wall thickness now to see where we are. You can see that we're between an eighth and three sixteenths of an inch wall thickness. And that's the sort of thing that we were looking for throughout the piece. Just going to reduce some of the waste block there with the gauze to allow myself access in behind the base. With a little narrow parking tool and going through there to reduce that base diameter smaller. Now with the 3 8 spindle gauge, I'm reducing the diameter of the base and creating a much more acceptable aesthetic form. Remove the mass of the gouge. Now I'm using the point of the skew chisel down here. This requires a high level of skill. One mistake now, and it will dig in and spiral back up that base there. And you'll have ruined considerable amount of time and effort that you've put in. But it's worth practicing to learn these skills. Maybe just worth mentioning that when I'm working with the very dense timbers, I often don't use the skew chisel to achieve that. I tend to use the gouge more and then lightly shear scrape. Often with the very dense timbers, you can get a kickback much more easily than you can with these more forgiving timbers that we're using here. I'm using the abrasive dipped into paste wax again. This minimizes friction heat. Papers I'm using are silicon carbide, which as the name means, you can use the, the wet and dry papers and the wax gives that moisture. It minimizes the dust in the atmosphere as well. And I work this through from 150 grit down to 400 grit as a rule using three or four different grades along the way. Now we've done the sanding, I'm using 4 steel wool, again dipped in the paste wax. This will get rid of any of the scratches that you may have put in with your abrasive paper. We've already sanded the interior. I haven't used a sealer on this particular piece, I'm just using a high quality paste wax here just as the final finish. As we're making this as a video, I haven't gone through quite all of the steps of finishing. On a soft wood like this, I would normally have sealed this with a lacquer finish. As in handling, you'll lose this sheen that's on it at the moment. But with the dense woods, such as ebony's and rosewoods, this is the method I normally use. Polishing direct onto the wood. We're now going to reduce the tenon down a little. We're getting close. We don't part all the way through. Just leave it about 3 8 of an inch diameter or so. We'll cut this off now with the saw. The handle go round to support the box. This is a safer method and stops tearing the material out in the bottom. And there's almost the finished piece. We've still got to do the base. I've got that little waste block. I'm just taking my vernier calipers to measure the internal size of that. And I'm going to create a spigot on here to invert that base of the box on to tool the bottom. Just creating the spigot with the 3 8 parting tool. Still a little large. Just reduce a bit more. Not quite. Just reduce more. You notice I haven't gone the full length of this because if I get it small I'm going to have to shorten it more. That looks like the fit that we need, so now we'll just lengthen that spigot for the full length bottoming out on the shoulder inside that box. I'm 
And that's the fit we need. Now that's good friction hold. Just tap it on a little more, rotate it, and you can see that's running through. Come round the end now with our little spindle gouge. Remove that little tenon that we've got there. Make that a nice, smooth, slightly concave surface so as the piece won't rock. That's tooled straight off the gouge, so now we can sand through again to our various grades of abrasive. I never start sanding with anything coarser than 150 grit on anything like this, usually finishing up around the 4 to 500 grit. Just applying the soft paste wax on the 4.0 steel wool, get rid of any sort of scratch marks from the abrasive. And just with a cloth put some more of that finishing wax on and just polish the conclusion. Now finished, remove that from our spigot holding device. We can now put the knob back in and we've now got our box totally finished. Finial boxes add another dimension to box making. Now select yourself an inexpensive sound piece of material and go and make one like we've shown you in the video.